Still, even today, it blows my mind how many tricks that the Quest 2 has up its sleeve that Oculus just doesn't tell you about. Many of these are hidden in sub-menus, require opting into beta modes, and even sometimes require specific button combinations to activate. So in today's video, I'll be giving the 10 most useful and just flat out awesome Oculus Quest 2 life hacks that Oculus doesn't tell you about. Before I get started, I'm giving away a brand new Oculus Quest 2 head strap. It's super comfortable and provides a way better support than the default flimsy Quest 2 strap. So if you want to win yourself one of these, drop a comment down below on what your best Oculus Quest 2 life hack is in your opinion. Also, obviously, make sure you've liked the video and hit that subscribe button as I'll be picking people from my subscribers list. Okay, on to the actual video now. So first, to utilize some of these life hacks, you're going to have to enable Oculus developer mode. There's plenty of tutorials showing how to sign up as a developer and get access to these features but assuming you've already completed the developer setup go to settings go to developer and slap that shit on don't worry if you haven't signed up as a developer though as many of the tips shown in this video will still be accessible by you like this first one and that is to preserve your battery and internet connection through fully shutting off the headset it blows my mind how many people don't know that you can fully shut the quest 2 off just like an iphone if you hold down the power button for long enough the quest 2 will initiate a pop-up asking if you want to shut the headset off or restart Obviously, Obviously, you can go ahead and hit the power off option if you have your controller nearby, but if you just continue to hold down the power button, the headset will fully power itself down. Now, why am I telling you this? This seems like a really obvious tip that's not really a life hack. Well, it's incredibly important to actually fully shut this thing down while not in use for a few key reasons. Actually, the entire reason why I even bothered mentioning powering this thing down as a life hack is, one, if you don't own a Wi-Fi router at home that limits the amount of data that an item such as the Quest 2 uses, leaving the Quest 2 on allows it to continuously update and send data in the background. Not only is it a little unnerving generally to have essentially a four camera motion sensing and audio detecting device sit in the middle of your living room, constantly pinging data back and forth, but even if you don't care about any possible security concerns, it also sucks up your data rate throughout your home if you don't have an aforementioned Wi-Fi router that can properly limit the amount of data a single device uses. There have been times where I've left my Quest 2 on and randomly had my 220 megabit per second download speed slow to a crawl only to discover that my Quest 2 has decided to attempt to install multiple Oculus applications at once. And two is an obvious one. If this thing isn't fully powered off, it will continue to drain battery even when not in use. Due to the nature of the Quest 2 as a device and how how long you usually use it as a time, having a long battery of life is crucial to using this thing. And as we know, letting lithium ion battery packs like the one found in the Quest 2 drain to 20% or below, or on the opposite end, letting it overcharge puts excessive strain on the battery pack used in the Quest 2, shortening its lifespan and decreasing its efficiency over time. So if you know you won't be using your Quest 2 for a few hours or even the rest of the day, it's probably a good idea to completely shut this thing off. So life hack number two, is taking screenshots with the Quest 2. I didn't even know this was possible up until very recently. To take a screenshot without bringing up the overlay menu, going to share and hitting screenshot, all you actually have to do is just hold down the Oculus button on your controller and hit the trigger at the same time. This instantly takes a screenshot of whatever you're looking at in the virtual world. Why this isn't made clear by Oculus or Facebook, I guess we'll never know. Lifehack numero tres is enabling the pass-through feature to the cameras with just the tap of your fingers. This will allow you to double tap the side of the Quest 2 headset to enable pass-through in order to instantly see the real world in front of you. To do this, bring up the Oculus overlay, hit the settings button, and then go to Guardian and enable the pass-through shortcut. Now, if you double tap the side of the Oculus Quest 2, it will enable the front cameras, allowing you to see into the world in front of you. This is incredibly useful if you just want to grab a you know, drink of water while you have the headset on, or you want to move something out of the way of your play space without having to take the headset off and readjust it when you put it back on. Life hack number four is one I think most tips and trick videos have probably highlighted, but I can't not at least give it a mention in this video. That's looping the hand strap around the tracking ring to provide a grip experience similar to the Valve Index Knuckles controllers. This is great if you want to be able to let go of your controllers and not have them drop out of your hand. It can also make throwing items in VR feel a lot more natural. Credit to Oculus Wilkes, whose video I'm showing in the background. You take out the rubber strap pin that's located under the battery cover, loop it through the top ring, and put the pin back in its hole and slide the cover back on. However, this only works 
works if you have slightly smaller hands. You can see it's kind of difficult for me to get my hand in here. And once my hand is in here, my thumb is nowhere near the thumbstick. And generally, my whole hand is in kind of an awkward position around the controller. It's also kind of flimsily attached to my hand as well. If you really want to get that index controller feel out of your Oculus controllers, it's probably just a better idea to buy from a third-party vendor a full strap replacement like these ones made by Kiwi. These essentially give you the adjustability and style of the index controllers with your Quest 2 controllers. Life hack number five is one that's worth at least a mention here, and that is Oculus's refund policy. If you've purchased a game within the last 14 days and have played it for less than two hours, Oculus will offer a full refund. This is the exact same refund policy that platforms such as Steam have, and it's great to see it in action on the Oculus platform as well. Obviously, don't abuse this system to essentially just try out games. Oculus will and have denied people in the past who have attempted to abuse the refund policy. Now, life hack number six is upping the tracking refresh rate. This is one I really wished I knew about sooner. If you've ever felt that the tracking on the Quest 2 feels a little sluggish or sometimes jittery during fast Beat Saber songs or during intense matches of Thrill of the Fight, then you are in luck. If you bring up the Oculus menu, go to settings, then go to the device tab. If you scroll down, you'll see tracking frequency. You can choose between 50 and 60 hertz. Obviously, 60 hertz will give you the faster and more accurate tracking, though at the cost of battery life. Luckily, though, you can switch between modes as you please, dependent on what games you're playing. This can make passing literal crimes against humanity, such as spin eternally in Beat Saber, just a little more bearable. Life hack number seven is turning off Guardian. <laughs> Now, why would you want to do this? Why would you want to expose yourself to possibly punching a hole through your wall? Karen. Oh! Well, in some games and applications, you might want to just sit at your desk or a chair or anywhere that's outside of your main play space. With Guardian on the Quest 2, it will continuously switch to pass through to tell you that you're out of bounds. This can be super annoying if you're just trying to watch a movie on your couch or are just outside of your play space. Luckily, though, you can completely disable Guardian whenever you want. Also, this is one of the reasons why I told you at the beginning of the video that you probably want to turn on developer mode as you're going to need a developer account in order to access this developer tab and turn off Guardian. So if you have already signed up as a developer, if you want to disable Guardian, bring up the Oculus menu, go to settings, go to the now enabled developer tab and disable Guardian there. If you haven't already signed up as a developer, you're kind of out of luck. I know a few people have tried disabling the tracking, but I don't think that's a long term solution to disabling Guardian. Now onto life hack number eight. This is one I've mentioned a few times, actually quite a few times in past videos. So I'm not going to spend long on this one. And that's changing your USB power management settings, as well as upping your bitrate and resolution in the Oculus Tray tool if you're using a link cable. Disabling USB power management settings will prevent Windows from limiting the amount of power that the Quest 2 can access and will also prevent Windows from suspending the USB port that your link cable is plugged into. And obviously upping your resolution and bitrate using the Oculus Tray tool will provide a much better image in your Quest 2 via link. I have a full video detailing how to do both of these so link up here in the top. What is this left right? Well, okay, it'll be here dude. Life hack number nine is how to record video and actually access it outside of your quest too. It hurts me how many tips and tricks videos tell you how to record and then proceed to not explain how to actually get the video over to your PC or especially your phone. I know a lot of you that use a quest tube don't actually own a gaming PC or a computer that you can reliably transfer video from. So not knowing how to transfer this video that you record on your quest 2 to your phone to share with your friends can be incredibly frustrating. So obviously to just record bring up the oculus menu go to share and hit record. Once once done recording, bring up the Oculus menu, go to share and hit record again to stop that recording. Now to actually get that footage off of the Quest 2, for PC, if you have a PC available to you, plug the Quest 2 into your PC using a link cable or the included charging cable. At first, you likely won't see the Quest 2 on your PC anywhere to be found and that's because you have to allow your PC access through the Quest 2 headset. While still having the Quest connected to your PC, put the headset on and you'll see a message saying allow access to data. Obviously, if you want your PC to be able to actually access the video, you're going to have to hit allow. Now, go back to your PC and you'll see your Quest 2 will have popped up. Go into the Quest 2 files, go to Oculus and hit videos and bam, your recordings should all be 
that. Now for mobile, it gets a little annoying and a little Facebooky. Now on some phones, it is possible to connect the Quest 2 to your phone directly if your mobile device has a USB-C port. However, particularly if you're on an Apple device, you're not going to have a USB-C port. So what you're going to have to do is go to the share tab on your Quest 2, go to camera roll, select the video that you want to upload, click on that video, and then upload that file to Facebook. Yep, unfortunately at the time of this recording, this is still the only way to get video files over to your phone if you don't have a USB-C port or a PC or laptop available. What's even worse is that you have to upload the video publicly to your Facebook as you must copy the link to the video and paste it into a third-party online Facebook video downloader in order to download the video. Obviously, once downloaded, you can just go ahead and delete the post, but why Facebook or Oculus hasn't just given users the ability to share the video to, you know, the Oculus app that is literally already linked to your phone anyway is completely beyond me. Perhaps this is just like another cringe attempt of Facebook trying to get you to use their services. Hopefully this changes in the future, but right now this is the only way that at least myself and many other YouTubers have found to get your footage over to your phone. Now finally, life hack number 10. In my opinion, one of the most important ones and that's making sure that the head strap, this top head strap is taking most of the weight of the headset. Most new VR users just strap the Quest 2 directly to their face by over tightening the adjustment straps at the back of the headset and this will cause that infamous VR face or the big red ring around your eyes caused by pressure from the headset. However, this is quite obviously wrong. You shouldn't end up looking like a tomato after you've used your VR headset. The top strap on the Quest 2 is there for a reason. Make sure that the top strap is adjusted so that it's taking as much of the weight of the headset as possible when this thing is on your head. The rear straps should purely just hold the Quest 2 in place and prevent it from wobbling instead of forcibly attaching the headset to your face by over tightening them. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you in any way, shape or form. If it was, please drop a like down below and maybe a sub if you want more content like this. And obviously, if you want to win yourself a brand new Oculus Quest 2 head strap, drop a comment down below on what your own personal personal best quest to life hack is and i'll be picking a winner in my next video obviously like i said be subscribed and hit like on the video as i'll be picking people from my subscribers list thank you so much for getting this one on the video i really do appreciate it you're the ones that keep these videos alive as you contribute the most to watch time so thank you i really do appreciate you watching to the end thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next one peace bye bye I wonder if by the time this video has come out, we've hit 20k. Yo, if we've hit 20k by the time this video comes out, just spam in the comments 20k gang. That's going to be our, our like code word. 20k gang with the 100 emoji dotted around it. That'd be hilarious. Thank you all for the support recently. It's, I'm so glad I can make these videos and you guys actually like them. Thank you. Just so much. Thank you. Uh, 20k gang. Much appreciate. Join my Discord if you haven't already. It's a good place to hang out. Link in the description down below. And maybe hop on over to my Twitch and hang out with me there. I'm going to get to work on this video. Peace. Bye-bye.